Hi, I'm John Wilder, historian for Aleppo Shrine. Uh, I have a uh, piece I brought to you today. It's not particularly old. It probably dates from the 1960s, 1970s. But this is a uh, megaphone that was used by one of the uh, units at Aleppo, the Aleppo Chanters. And this goes back to when they were actually a marching unit. Um, the Aleppo Chanters, for those of you who don't know, are a chorus or a choir. Um, so they would parade with the rest of the units and be singing along the way using their megaphones. Uh, later on, they would have a trailer with an um, electronic uh, microphone system that they would, they would use. Uh, but these, these were used. Uh, their uniform was a uh, short uh, yellow tux jacket that they would wear. Um, now, the chanters are still around. They don't parade anymore, but they do sing the traditional music that goes with the ceremonials uh, at the shrine. It adds quite a bit to the ritual. Um, but the interesting story about the chanters is they were founded, uh, you know, as the current chanters were founded in the 1950s under the potentate illustrious Andrew Seeler, who uh, enjoyed singing himself, but he was from a family of caterers in uh, the Boston area. They had the contracts to cater most of the Masonic bodies in the area. Uh, but an interesting bit of history we found out is there was actually a previous group of Aleppo chanters in the 1930s. They were started uh, around 1935, 1936, and grew to be a very large uh, men's chorus in the area. After about a year, all of a sudden, they just disappeared. And it took quite a lot of digging um, there's not a lot of evidence left except for a few mentions in the early Aleppo magazines. And the museum in Lexington has one group photo of them, I believe in Jordan Hall, uh, singing. But um, come to find out, back in the 20s and 30s, when you know traditional musical groups were very popular, um, the Aleppo chanters started to go out and do concerts, as the Aleppo band did but they became a commercial success. And there was a disconnect between the shrine and the organization of the chanters uh, on how the money would be taken in, how it would be spent. And uh, it was decided to disband. Uh, from what I can tell, all the members carried on with the group under a different name um, and continued to perform. But, um, they went, uh, they, they disbanded as an Aleppo unit, and it wasn't until the 50s that they were refounded. Um, although it does get into some of the history of what constitutes a unit and what constitutes the founding of a unit. Unfortunately, the records are not very clear on this because looking back even further into the 1800s, we have references to the Aleppo choir performing at ceremonials. Um, similarly, before the Aleppo Band was founded in 1915, there are mentions of a band and orchestra playing at ceremonials. Before the Stewards were founded in the 1960s, as early as the second meeting of Aleppo in 1885, there's a reference to a chief steward and his assistant stewards. So it's a lot of back and forth and a lot of debating and his as a story of Aleppo, sort of uh, what I decide counts. <laughs> um, but uh, it is an interesting story with the chanters um, and going back even before this piece into the 30s when bands and fraternal bands and music groups were considered uh, having commercial ventures of their own. Um, so it does speak to an interesting bit of our history with the Masonic groups crossing over into the public domain. Um, but we're proud to have this uh, piece in our collection as a relic of the current chanters, which are still a group of dedicated nobles that, that add quite a bit to our ritual. But with that, if you like what you see, we uh, ask you to like our video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Facebook. Thank you.